Division titles, two Super Bowl championships. From top to bottom, managing general partner Al Davis designed the blueprint for the organization. While Davis patterned Raider uniforms after the Army football team, the Black Knights of the Hudson, he shaped their image after Blackbeard the Pirate. Their players were cut from a different cloth, renegades with faces only a mother could love. The Raiders cultivated, then reveled in their ominous image. We were the black colors, the skull and the crossbones, and you know we didn't represent everything that was good. So we probably led the league in booze, you know, B-O-O, -O, boo. Uh, because everywhere we'd go, you know, we'd go on the road, and, but, but it was a means of acceptance. And the worst thing for your football team to go out on the field would be to complete silence. It's like there's no one there, and, and we kind of did encourage that, and the players kind of like, you know, that, you know, everyone's against us, you know, we have to band together. Nowhere was this thinking more evident or more persuasive than on defense where the motto was, might makes right. The mauling, brawling Raider defense has traditionally been one of the most intimidating, most penalized, and most effective units in the game. When the Raiders sense fear, anxiety, or weakness, they go for the throat. this unwavering, ferocious image was a compelling, flexible philosophy. This is a goal-oriented organization, and our goal is to win, to be on top, to maintain our level of excellence, so that everything we do has singleness of purpose. If it's going to interfere with our winning, we're going to make a change, so that we don't, we're not slaves to routine. Al Davis has a, a saying that I think a lot of us has, have picked up. We don't say never, we don't say always. To us, it's much more important to be right at the moment than it is to be consistent. Al Davis dresses in the past, but thinks in the future. He is called the genius, and his signature is written on every offensive play. In the deeply rutted path of conventional football, he paved some artfully new directions. Davis disdained possession football for an all-out assault on the end zone. Every play was designed to reach the scoreboard. The idea was to keep the defense off balance by always pushing forward, hurrying the ball downfield. The Raiders became the second highest scoring team over the last 20 years by developing an offense that made the long pass as reliable a weapon as the off-tackle play. Like a New York Yankee emblazoned in pinstripes, the wearer of silver and black was a special person. In their search for these special players, the Raiders operated as lone wolves, ignoring talent pools and scouting combines. Men like Fred Boletnikoff, number 25, fit hand in glove with their unique system. When we bring people in here, we're looking for people who will fit the philosophy of football that we believe in. 
for instance, when La Monica was here, he was known as the Mad Bomber. We didn't throw long because we had La Monica. We got La Monica because we wanted to throw long. While most teams employed the bomb only as a desperate measure, the Raiders used it as a matter of routine. They were the first team to extensively and effectively utilize setbacks to complement receivers in long distance patterns. Oakland knew well that linebackers were ill-equipped to cover running backs in the open field. The position of tight end, once the province of lumbering linemen, was streamlined by the Raiders into one of grace and speed. Oakland also tinkered with old notions about offensive linemen and came up with a lineup of giants. Many chuckled when they transformed a huge college All-American tackle named Gene Upshaw into a guard. As usual, the last lap came from the Raiders. The Raider running game effectively counterpointed their ambitious passing philosophy. Here a succession of rough and tumble backs beginning with number 44, Marv Hubbard, proved not to be trifled with. No fancy feints and jabs here, just heavyweight right hands under the heart. The Raiders have been the winningest team over the past 20 years. Testament that their body of football philosophy remains effectively alive. The Raiders were a team of character and characters, and despite their reputation as an ill wind, there were some breezy free spirits. Even Johnny John Matton, who won 100 games in 10 years, used some bizarre methods. Now, I used to say something before a game, every game before we'd go out, and, I, and sometimes even at halftime before we'd go out, and I had no idea what it meant, but I heard it someplace, and it sounded like a pretty good idea. The last thing I'd say was, don't worry about the horse being blind, just load the wagon, then let's go. I have no idea what it meant, but you know, some guys kind of got excited when I said it. Oakland trails 20 to 14. Ten seconds left. The crowd takes up a chant of defense. Robisky and Banizak on the back. Slot right. Branch inside. Bradshaw, stable the back. Here comes the rush. He sidesteps. Can he throw? He can't. The ball flip forward as well as a wild scramble. Two seconds on the clock. Casper grabbing the ball. It is all a fumble. Casper has recovered in the end zone. The Oakland Raiders have scored on the most scene. Unbelievable. Absolutely impossible dream of a play. The play was aptly called the Holy Roller. Another chapter in Raider folklore. They were the unquestioned kings of the improbable, impossible victory. Fantastic finishes and storybook endings lent almost a mythic quality to the team. It's not real. 52,000 people minus a few lonely Raider fans are stunned. A man would be a fool to ever try and write a drama and make you believe it. This one will be relived forever. That's one thing that we'd always taken great pride in, that when we were behind and we had to move the ball and we had to get something done, that we'd do it. When you get in a pressure situation, there's no one that you'd rather have involved in that play than Kenny Stabler. He has the uncanny knack of putting a ball uh, between people and between hands and, and just being able to slip things in there from all different angles, and that's exactly what he did.
Kenny the Snake Stabler possessed a Midas touch, and the Oakland Raiders found a pot of gold under his rainbow. The greatness of Stabler was not measured by statistics, though they were impressive. It was gauged by his heroics in the clutch. Nowhere was this trait more evident than on December 21st, 1974, when a playoff victory appeared certain for Don Shula's dog. There he is, fading, looking, looking, looking. He's under the gun. He's caught, he throws. It is. Even though it was called the greatest game ever played, it was not until three years later that the Raiders were considered a great team. From the Rose Bowl Stadium in Pasadena, California, it is Super Bowl XI. This is Bill King with a welcome. Every there are no substitutes for a world's championship. The only thing the Raiders had never won here in the canyon at Arroyo Seco. This was their albatross, the blot on their spotless record. But even this flew away and was erased dramatically in Super Bowl XI against the Minnesota Vikings. The Raiders closing in on the Super Bowl championship. Francis back to pass, throws the sideline, or picked off! It's going to be a touchdown! Victory elevated both the Oakland Raiders and John Madden to pro football's most exalted station. <laughs>